Cebu City. My bus, V hires, and intercity buses. Aircon versus no aircon. Len and I will get into that with you. My bus. Full size buses, guys. Yeah. And they run from the airport to downtown Mabolo, Cebu. Yeah. And here in SM. And SM Seaside. Yeah. Well, this is SM Mabolo, where we're That's, at right now. Yeah. And it also runs to SM Seaside, not to Talisai, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. From here, it goes to Robinson's Galleria, then down to Talisai in SM Seaside. Apologize if it's a little windy here, guys. Yeah. It's windy. <laughs> if you know SM Mabolo, then you know that it's the docks are right there. Yeah. Okay, let. Yeah. It's really hot. In it, Kyle, today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go over and look at a Cirrus bus. Many of the buses have Wi-Fi. The kicker with the Cirrus buses, guys, is know your destination because it, it is not all the way to certain locations, right? The other kicker is if you want aircon, be specific. It can get stifling hot in those buses, especially as they're cruising through the city. So as you can see, if the windows are open, <laughs> obviously right um, it's another one here now if you're looking at this from a tourism standpoint you're not going to see anything so if you can work it out with the bus driver to get the front seat Lynn and I do it all the time and in a couple of cases well in one case we actually waited for another bus we didn't bother uh, and in another case another two cases the driver went to the people sitting there and said, you're going to sleep all the way anyway. Out you go. <laughs> and we got the bus all the way back. We took a bus from um, Ormoc all the way through to Papanga. <laughs> it was brutal. 44 hours on the bus, guys. Because the bus didn't go across at this one location. And we had to sleep on the bus overnight. Okay, so here, here's the schedule, guys. There's the schedule. Give you an idea. They run pretty consistently, right? So not too bad. Not too bad at all. Okay. She's trying to leave me. <laughs> yeah, I got them all there. So yeah, yeah. I it. Yep. So that's if you're going to go over to the other islands, guys. Negros. Yep. Negros, Northern Negros, Central. Northern part of Negros. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go over and see the V hires. So from Cebu City to Bacolod, how much was that, Lynn? Uh, it's 748, roughly 750 pesos. 750 per head. Yeah. So not too bad. Yeah. Obviously, the roll on, roll off. Uh, if you're just walking, it's going to be cheaper. Yeah. To but cross the. the but you still got to get the bus Across to the terminal. Across the water is three hours. Yeah. So yeah. you will technically arrive in Kapolo at night. And if you're going to be taking your cars, we would. It's going to be more than a thousand Just drive pesos to as the well. Pier. Yeah. 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 Okay, V hire. Let's go over there. Okay, guys. The V hires here on the SM Mabolo site. These are all for intercity. So going to the various subdivisions. Example. Uh, we've got Cordova and I can't read that. I haven't got my glasses on. <laughs> anyway, but if you want to go up through the province, go to SM and look for the black taxis. Uh, and the last we've been paying, it ranges from anywhere from 250 to 300 to go to Bogo. And an exclusive, they try to get three, three, or 3,000 uh, five out of you or two thousand five. I think the last time we paid two five two five and last year we were paying two thousand Yeah, for the Avenza size not these big hiasis, right? Um, if you want an exclusive ride up and down Okay, so again almost everything is available here at SM Mabolo. You can get your 
my bus. You can obviously get taxis. You can get the intercity uh, to run up to, say, Constellation uh, or down to Talisai, etc. All of it is here, SM Mabolo. That's how you get around here, guys. Uh, I'm also going to do a short little video here on touring in the Philippines. Yeah. So Lynn is just giving me an update here on the, the one driver that we have, his phone number. And he was saying that if we wanted guided tours in, say, Cebu, uh, three, five for the whole day. Yeah, but but it's, a there's, group it's a group tour, okay, but there's no guide, as it were. If yeah. you go to India, as an example, you end up with a guide. You have a driver and a guide, and the guide explains everything about the temple or whatever that you might be at. Yeah. Here, not a, we've just not run into it, guys. All right, we were just outside, and I checked the audio. It wasn't good enough for outside. Uh, the V hires, um, they're just more interested in taking people from here to there. So it looks like the black taxi business has kind of taken that over. Um, now, what you want to do is find an Avenza and not a Hiace. The Hiaces will cost you a lot more than an Avenza. Avenza is only considered an eight seater or maybe seven seater. Um, whereas the Hiace, I think is something like 12 or whatever. And they want insane money, guys, insane. Now the touring in the Philippines isn't what you know you would hope because of the 7,000 islands and stuff. It's just how do you set up a tour company and be able to deal with things. It's not like Thailand where you can bang from here to there and everywhere and across borders and the whole nine yards. Here is much, much harder to do. Um, now there are set locations to go on tours like Bohol and such, but uh, you really need to track those down yourself. So let's have a look and see what they have on the surface at the travel agent here in SM Mabolo. Okay, we're outside the travel agent. And before we give you a show here of some of the stuff that's on the wall, I wanna tell you, you really gotta treat the Philippines like you're a backpacker. You need to uh, uh, get out of your comfort zone and start learning things like the bus system and the row row system so you can get inter island and such uh, but as far as destination goes look what the travel agent has got here if you want to book stuff it's all about leaving the country <laughs> uh, even in the background there oh they have a bohol day tour there so we will go in and look at that one but we got japan we've got um, Spain, France, the Vatican, and then their airlines. But honestly, guys, what you need to do is find the hot spots that you want to go see as a tourist and then bang around and see them. But like I say, once we started treating it more like backpacking, the backpacking type of stuff that we did in, uh, the, in Thailand, it was wonderful. We make our own way to point A to point B, and then when we get there, we look for local tours. Now, sometimes you get lucky, you find a taxi here that has a little flip card on the back seat and they'll have some destination stuff there. And that's why we're trying to get some of these prices for you. Uh, as Lynn mentioned, the black taxi, 3.5, he'll drive you to all the hot spots in Cebu City. But again, it is a self-guided once you get to that spot. And make sure you know where you want to go because, you know, these guys are going to show you the convenient spots and maybe as they do with the, the buses and stuff, they stop at these uh, bus stop calendarias because they get free meals and stuff like that and they, they hope that you're gonna spend money there as well. So just be aware of that type of stuff. We were okay with that stuff. When Lynn and I went to Palawan, we met a trike driver right at the airport. We really wanted to do this backpacking as close as we could and it was wonderful. We ran into the one and only trike driver that came all the way out to the airport and he was for sure taught how to be a tour guide, uh, not ripping off the, the tourists and stuff like that. He immediately had a kit of things that you could do. And then if we wanted excursions to leave the city, he took us to another agent, which he got it paid in, in rice bundles. Um, 
I used to say sacks of rice. Lynn kept correcting me on that. Uh, and that's how he got paid. And as a result, when we were ready to go the next morning, we said, hey, dude, pick us up and take us to the, uh, the V hire. And that's what he did. And of course, we tipped him. He, w he didn't want any money for it, guys. He already made his commission. He was happy, uh, which was very, very nice. Whereas I've never run into that anywhere else in the Philippines. But you got to remember, Palawan and Porta Princesa has a UNESCO site there now. And it is new. And the mayor and the governor, I think they've taken some tourism lessons from other countries. <laughs> Anyway, let's have a pop in here and look at the bowhole tour. Lynn's just checking on the price here, guys. But everything else on the inside here is all about uh, going off to... Oh, no, I stand corrected. Here we go. Taiwan. There's Palawan. So here's the UNESCO site, the Underground River. Cool. Now, guys, there are things like museums and such. Uh, Clark has a very good museum there. Uh, they even have a 5D uh, Mount Pinatumo presentation, which was kind of funky. Sprayed water all over us and jets of air and stuff like that. Anyway, check out the museums too. Some of them can be very, very good. Okay, so Lynn's got the uh, bowhole thing here. Uh, what do we got here? Now this is going to, because it's leaving from Cebu, this is going to include the uh, fast cat probably? Fast craft. Fa fast is, craft. Yeah. And I don't know what, what 5, fast thousand, craft are taking. 5,700 5, per person, minimum of two people. Yeah. And so there you'll see the chocolate hills, the, the Tarshears, forest. the forest. And you go out over in a fast craft, which is nice. It's over there quickly, guys. Yeah, the, church, uh, the, the old, church, the old church, but the earthquake took it out. I'm not sure how much of it is still standing. They, they renovated it. Did yeah. they renovate yeah, it? That's after good. After the 2013 earthquake. Okay, then, we heard they were raising money for that. That compact and the, and oh, the yeah. lunch at the River Cruise, Lubok River Cruise. I'll see if I can find the picture of me at the blood compact, guys. I was at least 50 pounds heavier than I am now. And it comes with a tour guide as well. Oh, okay. And this one includes a guide. Okay. So check out the Roro companies too, guys. If you go right down to the uh, Fast Craft uh, terminal here in Cebu, I think we found that considerably cheaper last time and we still had a guide. Yeah, we, right? we were using the, what was that, the to go. The oh, yeah. fast craft because right. they also have their own um, travel agent. Right. Like yeah, just go and you know take a to go fast craft, and then at the ticketing outlet in their pier in the pier, you can just ask them if they have a you know a, a tour. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and that that's what it's I say, guys. To this, you have so. to just kind of bang around and take some time, and once you get yeah. to know the system, you can bang around the Philippines pretty nice. Um, yeah. Oh, and the one other warning about the Roro terminals, they tend to change because this guy that's got a boat is ticked off with the other guy, so then they end up going to another location. Yeah. So uh, just be aware of that, that, uh, you know, talk to some locals about wh when you get your hotel, like say on Ms. Body, uh, ask the hotel owners where the uh, terminal is because it may have changed on you. Okay guys, that's a wrap for trying to tour in the Philippines. Think backpacking style. Later Gators.